Praise the Lord. Welcome. And our little bit of snow, it looks great outside. A little bit, it looks good from here. Looks good. Well, welcome to Community Chapel. <clears throat> it's good to see all your smiling faces. Most of them are smiling anyway. Yes, smiling faces. So, so we get started this morning. I'd just like us to <clears throat> lift up uh, some praise to the Lord. And, and uh, we had a transfer of uh, leadership in our country. I want us to pray for our new president and our folks down below them. And just uh, as God leads us in a new time. So let's just praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we praise you that you see the beginning from the end. And as we even talk today, Lord, that you've been there long before anything began. Father, we pray today we lift up to you President Biden, Lord, and Vice President Harris. And Lord, and their cabinet, and Lord, our congressmen and senators below them, Father. And it just comes down, all of our representatives and Governor Reynolds and we just pray, O oh God, that your hand would lead and that it would lead according to your purposes and your plans. Father, that the name of the Lord be praised above all else. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for your hand upon us. Lord, your name, your name is great. Thank you, Father. Be with us today, O oh Lord. And as we worship you, I pray, Father, that your presence, your Holy Spirit, would just come into this place. Lord, that we would know your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So just a couple of announcements. So we've got prayer tonight at 6.30. We invite everybody to come. It's a pretty informal time. We take about 15 minutes or so and we praise and worship and sometimes it goes a little longer than that and then... And we just pray for the needs around us in our church and around us. So uh, feel free to come to that. And Wednesday night, 630, we have Bible study and we have a similar routine, except we dive into the word and uh, find some good things. So a couple other things we got going. Uh, we started a new prayer line this week at Community Chapel. So um, the numbers on the sign and all it is is a recording, and so people can drive by and they can call in and leave a prayer, for, you know, that they need prayer for us, and we'll take that before the Lord. So uh, just pray for that as you think about those, and if you have prayer requests, feel free to <clears throat> drop them on there. Um, probably between Shirley and myself, we'll pick them up and get them out and get them prayed for. We'll pick them up every single day. So... So are you ready to worship? I am. I am. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. So we haven't done this song in a while. It's called Great Are You, Lord. And it goes like this. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So 
So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. We pour out our praise to you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. We pour out our praise to you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I worship your holy great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand 
thousand years and then forevermore. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship your Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. He's a name above all names. He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Let's sing the name above all names. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Lord, we praise you. There is none like you, O oh Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Father, we pray today that as we look at your word and as we try to understand who you are, what you desire of us, 
Father, open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear things that we've never heard before. Oh, Holy Spirit, work in us today, oh God. Work in us and teach us your ways. Guide us in your truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. Whew. So I'll kind of tell you where we're going in the next few weeks. So we've been talking uh, this year just about who God is understanding who he is we talked about God the Father you know back in Hebrews we spent some significant time on who Jesus is and so we're starting into a little bit of the Holy Spirit and we're going to also start coming in the next few weeks and just talking about worship and understanding what he is because you have to understand we have to understand that God instructs us in his ways. God instructs us in his worship. Okay? And so other religions, they have their courses of worship. They have their instructions and in how it works. You know, and so we can say, well, I, I'm just going to worship God how I want to. Well, that doesn't work because God has a way that he wants to be worshiped. I'll say that one more time. God has a way that he wants to be worshipped. Jesus says that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There's a way that God has designed for us to worship. As you read through the Old Testament, I mean through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, I mean, that portion of Scripture well, at least four of those chapters, is all about how to worship God and what He desires. And we found that there were penalties for the children of Israel that didn't worship God in the way that He said. Scary things. I mean, there was a time when there were some of the priests who offered incense before the Lord and they didn't do it the right way. And the Bible says that fire came out of the presence of God and consumed them. And that's not the only time. And even in the New Testament, when we, uh, we see a story in the book of Acts about a couple named Ananias and Sapphira. And they were godly people. They were part of the new church of God. And God used them as an example, and they decided that they would lie to the Holy Spirit. And as they came and presented their lie before the elders in the church, the Holy Spirit killed them. Just... So, I don't say all that to scare us, I just say that to say that when we come before the Lord, we come before Him in a proper way. We learned in Hebrews that Jesus really cut through a lot of the red tape. Just... Right? Get back in the camera, sorry. But Jesus cut through a lot of that red tape, and now Hebrews tells us that now that we can just walk right in. Walk right into the presence of the Lord that was at one time restricted for just a few. So we're going to start getting into all that. That's just kind of a, uh, um, a prequel. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> I actually brought my uh, clicker today. We're all happy about that. This has been an interesting day to say the least. So I, I won't tell you all the gory details of it. But uh, it's amazing that we're doing what we're doing right now. It's just amazing. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about who is God. Okay, and we're just going to hit a few highlights here. You know, Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. I think I have this up here too. Um, and so the Bible 
in the very first verse, assumes that we know there is a God. Because it just comes out and says, God created the heavens. It doesn't have to tell us who God is, but we find as we go on that there are many people that don't really understand who God is. We find that Moses said too, he said, who are you? He says, I don't even know who you are. You keep telling me. You keep telling me you have this plan for me. You want me to go down to Egypt and bring back these children of Israel, bring them out of bondage. I don't even know your name. Who are you? Who should I say sent me? And so we see that God speaks for himself. He says, I am. I have always been and I will always be. Always. Always been, always will be. I think it was Christmas Eve. One of our young ladies came up to me and she says, she says, Pastor, where did God come from? Legitimate question. Where did he come from? God says, I am. It kind of blows our mind, doesn't it? It messes with a finite mind that everything has a beginning and an end, and yet God says, I have always been. I will always be. So Jesus teaches us about God too. And this is an interesting place. In John 4, he says, God is a spirit. I just sit, shared this verse with you. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's giving these instructions to the disciples. So you need to understand this, that God is a spirit. And then Jesus goes on to say that God should be the person that gets the most attention in our lives. And this is what he says. He says this, he says, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's what he expects. And all through Scripture, we see examples of people who did and people who didn't. And those are the examples that we have before us that teaches us how to follow God. So last week, we talked about this, knowing God or Facebook friends. We just talked about, right, you know, a lot of us just know God because we know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows God. Do you know God? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a friend. And his friend told me about his friend that knows God. And God's like this because he told him, told him, told him, told me. So, yeah, I know God. I'm, I'm friends with God. Or do we know God? All through Scripture, God tells people, he reveals himself and he shows people, he reveals people who do know God, and then he shows people who don't know God. And there are ways that we can know whether or not we know God. So, we learned last week that knowing facts about God is not the same as knowing God. Just like knowing facts about me doesn't mean you know me. I mean, you could go out of this place today, somebody could come up to you and say, do you know Marv Lombard? Yes, I do. But each of you know me in a little varying degree. This lady up here on the front row, my wife, knows me better than any of you ever will. God wants us to know Him. So we find last week that knowing someone requires time spent. You can't know anybody without spending time with them. My wife knows me so well because we live in the same house together virtually 24 hours a day. And we've done that for almost 43 years. Go figure that one out. You don't have a chance of knowing me like that. Sure you do. And you just keep believing that. I can bring it right back. 
<coughs> so we see that if knowing a person in a relationship requires time spent, then knowing God requires time spent. It requires that. You can't get to know God without spending time with God. So Jesus says this, that there is one necessary ultimate goal, Jesus says, to know God. John 17, that's what he says. That's the only thing that's important. Because if you get this, everything else will come together. In fact, um, look at, I'll show you in Jeremiah chapter 9, listen to this verse. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone. So that means if you're going to boast, there's only one thing worth boasting about. That they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. That's the only thing worth knowing. And that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. You want to you brag about something? There's only one thing I care about, God says. Know me. Know me. We saw last week that God wants us to know him. He says this in Hosea chapter 6. He says, I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. You understand that when Hosea, the prophet, when the Lord said this to Hosea, this was a time when sacrifices, blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices were required. You had to do it. And there were many times throughout the year that these things had to be done. And God says, I don't really want that. No, he's saying, I know it's necessary, but what I really want is I want you to know me. And we saw this, that Jesus leads us to know the Father. That's what Jesus is all about. And he says this, he says, No one truly knows the Son except the Father. And no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. The Lord wants to reveal the Father to us. You know, we've talked about this before. You know, everybody loves Jesus, right? But God the Father, we're just a little bit afraid of. And yet Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I'm just like him. So you think he's some big, bad, ready to squash you with his thumb kind of being. He said, if that's what you think, you're all wrong. Because you see, I am just like him. You like me, you like him. If you don't like me, you don't like him. Because we're the same. We're just the same. God, is what we, God has what we want, but we don't want Him. We only want what He has. We saw that last week. And so we see that God has all these benefits for us, and we want those benefits. We want salvation. We don't want to go to hell. We want to live. Okay? But we don't want to do things His way. Jesus said this, he says, how can you say you love me and not do what I say? It doesn't make any sense. He says, you say you love me, then do what I say. So we saw this last week, that without knowing God, we move farther from his heart. Hosea again says this, he says, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. All around us, all around us in our community, we see people's lives falling apart. God says, my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. You know, Leighton and I were talking a few weeks ago about this guy, a businessman, who uses his vehicle for business and found that this guy, for some reason, hadn't changed his oil or hadn't checked his oil. You know, and this is a lot like the Christian life. 
you know, in our vehicles, we ha- there are things that we have to do. We all know people who don't take care of their vehicles, right? And so they drive them until they're alongside the road, in- and that's where they stop. And by the time that happens, there's so much wrong with it, you can't even afford to fix it. And there's stories like that all around. And God is saying, my people are the same way. He says, I give them instruction. If they would do what I say, then their lives would be so much different. But my people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Because they say they love me, but they don't do what I say. I'm going to get stuck in here and just keep preaching preaching this message again, and I don't think you want me to do that, but it's good. Knowing God moves us in the direction of His heart. So as we know Him, it's like with my wife, the more I know her, I know what she likes. And so that kind of moves me to do things that she likes, right? Why would I do things she doesn't like? The more I know her, I know what she delights in, and it's a delight for me to do things she delights in. God uses those same words, and He says, why do you do what I don't delight in? What kind of relationship do we have? You say you love me. You don't act like you love me. Everything you do, I hate. You know, if I just did things that antagonize my wife, if I just did repeatedly the things that she hates, we would be in deep dew real soon. Right? God says it's the same way. Look at this, Psalm Knowing God requires a humble heart. He says, for, David says, for you do not desire sacrifice or else I'd give it to you. So you remember God already just said in Hosea that I don't really want sacrifices. I want you to know me. David figured this out before Hosea even lived. And he said, for you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it to you. You don't delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. What I'm really looking for, I want your heart. That's what I want. So we saw at the end that we really need to get after this one thing. It's one thing of knowing God. That's the only thing we need to do. All the things that we think we need to do in our lives, all the things we think we need to do to honor God or to do God's thing or all the things we think we're doing wrong, we need to do one thing. And that's to know God. And we start little. And we start moving towards God. And God begins to work out everything else. So the message version of the Bible says this, steep your life in God reality. And so I love this word steep because any of you who drink tea understand what steeping is. And steeping is when you've got a bowl or a cup of boiling water and you drop the tea bag in there and over a period of minutes, that tea begins to diffuse into the water. And the water that used to be clear with nothing in it now is full of tea. And the flavor and the essence of the tea has permeated the entire cup. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to steep ourselves in Him, in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. And Jesus says, don't worry about missing out You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met when you know God. When you know God.
So I'm going to start preaching now. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to talk a little bit today about who or what is the Holy Spirit. What are some of the other names that we've heard of the Holy Spirit? Anybody? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Yep, sure. Anybody else? Yep. The Father, right? The Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. Absolutely, right. Sure, sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Jehovah, absolutely. We've heard him called Comforter. We've heard him, heard him called the Helper. Okay, and so we're going to get into some of that. But the Holy Spirit is a who... We, you can see that all through Scripture. The Holy Spirit is a who, and the Holy Spirit is part of this, that God is a triune being. We, you've heard of the Trinity. And the Trinity is the God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so that's a triune being, a being in three different parts. We're kind of triune beings. We have a body, soul, and Holy a, a body, but not Holy, Holy Spirit. Well, if we're full of the Holy Spirit, but we have a body, soul, and spirit. So God is a triune being. God has the, the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And so we see this many times in Scripture. We're not going to go back through all of these things because we went through some Scriptures just showing uh, Jesus talked about places where we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all at the same time. Most of the time we see the Scripture talk about the Father or God or the Son or the Spirit, but sometimes we see them all together at the same time. One was at Jesus' baptism where Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of the Lord comes and descends on him in the form of a dove, and the Father speaks from heaven, this is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And so you see at that time, all three. And so what we're going to do is, we're gonna, I'm just going to read through you, th read for you Ephesians chapter 3, um, some selected verses out of there, just to give you a picture, because Paul is telling these people who live in Ephesus. Ephesus was a city in what was called Asia Minor, now Turkey. Ephesus doesn't exist anymore except ruins. But this is the church that was in Ephesus. And Paul, I'll uh, throw some of these up here for you, and it goes like this. As you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. Okay, so here we see him mention Christ. He says, God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now by his spirit, he has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. So right in this verse, all of a sudden, now we see God, the Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in the same verse. And then Paul goes on to say, I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Now, when we were studying Jesus, what do we know about Jesus in creation? Anybody remember? Jesus was at creation too. John tells us that nothing was created that was created that Jesus didn't create. So now we see God, the creator of all things, includes Jesus. And so then we go to the next verse and it says, God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. So this was God's eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're seeing this trinity again, God's plan carried out through Christ Jesus. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Remember what we learned in Hebrews. We talked about that today, that because of what Jesus did, now we can go boldly into his presence. Now in Ephesians, we see this again, that because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. 
And so even though we have a prayer line and people can call in and request prayer and you can call up and say, Pastor Marv, would you pray with me about this? I'd be happy to do that, but you don't have to have me or a priest or anybody else to go into the presence of God for you. Jesus already did it. And Jesus forever intercedes for us. He sits at the right hand of the Father, the Bible says, interceding for us. We don't have to have each other, even though we get strength from each other. We can go right in. In the middle of the night, I don't have to call up one of you guys. I can just get on my knees and go right in. Because that's the way it works. Paul goes on and says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees to, and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. I want to read that one more time here. So the Father is saying, so uh, Paul says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. What did Jesus say? What is the Lord's Prayer? How does it start? Our Father. Our Father in heaven. And so Paul is saying, I fall on my knees and pray to the Father, just like Jesus taught me to. And I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the vehicle that God empowers us with. We pray to the Father. Jesus intercedes for us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the power to live the way we need to live. That's how the Trinity works in our life. Let's go on to this next one. Then Christ... Okay, wait, 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 what? So we're going to be empowered through the Holy Spirit, okay? But then it goes, Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust Him. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever... Believes, trusts in Him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, and how high and how deep His love is. So here's the deal. We pray to the Father. Jesus intercedes on our behalf. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. And then the plan of God is that Christ dwells in our heart. His Spirit indwells in our hearts. And His love keeps us strong. And then we begin to understand See, the, develop, the relationship is developing, you see? As the relationship develops, our roots go deep. Our roots go down. And then we begin to understand how wide and how long, how high and how deep is His love for us. Because His love for us is incredible. And as we get to know Him, we begin to understand it better. He goes on to say, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That's the relationship. That's our relationship with God through Christ and the Holy Spirit. We see this happening. Let's finish this out. Now all glory to God, who is able, through His mighty power, to work within us by His Spirit. He's able. He's powerful enough. God is big enough. He's powerful enough to do what He says He's going to do. And He works in us by His Spirit to accomplish infinitely more 
than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, it seems, it seems like we're a lot more familiar with Jesus than we are with God the Father or the Holy Spirit. And yet Jesus says, I really want you to know God the Father. I want you to know Him. You need to know Him. Because knowing Him is the essence of everything. So if you know God, and we struggle with sin, when we know God, His heart starts to transfer into our heart. And so just like with my wife, all of a sudden, I know what she likes. I know what God likes. And I find myself doing the things that God wants me to do. And it's not even very hard. Because I love Him and I want to do what pleases Him. You know, one of the reasons we're going to step into some time on the Holy Spirit in these next few weeks is because I really feel like what we understand of the, of the Holy Spirit, a lot, of, a lot of times we underrate the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll say that one more time. I think a lot of times we underrate the Holy Spirit. We do because it's just like, I could name any of you guys and just say, well, yeah, I know him, but, you know, not a big deal. I mean, who, who would want that? Who would want me to say that about you? Because each of us, as we get to know each other, are wonderful people to know, wonderful people to love. But if we don't know each other, how do we know that? And in the same way with the Holy Spirit, we find too that many times the Holy Spirit is misrepresented. Because we've believed or we've seen people act like they know the Holy Spirit and they don't. And we've been introduced perhaps to the Holy Spirit from somebody who doesn't really know them and all of a sudden we go, I don't, I don't really want to know Him. I don't want to know the Holy Spirit. I don't need that. I don't need to know you. Yes, I do. Yeah. Because the Spirit is the vehicle through which God works. And without Him, we're lost. You know, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a, a couple minutes here. You know what? No, I'm not. This is where we're going to end today. I just want to share my heart with you. God is doing a work in the church around the world. God is doing a work. And I've been involved in the church. I haven't always been a Christian, but I've been involved in the church all of my life. Absolutely every moment of my life. And I have watched things happen. And what I see happening now, even in the United States, even in 50317, even in Des Moines, I'm seeing a coming together of pastors who long for things of the Spirit. You know, when I was a teenager, <clears throat> there are many of the denominations in, in Des Moines, in, in our country, in the world, that, 
that would have said that, that outward expressions of the Holy Spirit were of the devil. And that's not very prevalent anymore. Because anywhere men and women hunger for God and want to know Him, find that this element of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is essential. And I pray every week with pastors from churches and denominations that in their bylaws probably don't do, don't say what these pastors say. But these men and women are hungry for God and seeing the power of the Holy Spirit move in miracles and love and just things of the Spirit. It's amazing what God is doing. And the Holy Spirit is gentle. The Holy Spirit is loving and kind. And He is the infuser of our lives with the things of God. It's the Holy Spirit, one of the reasons why you sit here whole today with us. Right? I won't embarrass... Um, another lady in our church, I was in her home uh, a couple days ago. Just some need. Prayed, anointed with oil. And the Holy Spirit just came down in that apartment. Just came down. Just filled the room. And after prayer, we worshiped together a little bit. And you know what? I knew, I know how the Holy Spirit is. I knew that this wasn't going to be over anytime soon. And I needed to go home. And this lady from our church is just sitting on her sofa just worshiping the Lord. Just the Spirit of the Lord just resting on the place. And I just eventually put my hand on her shoulder and said, I'm going to leave. Just let the Spirit do what the Spirit's doing. And I let myself out. God is moving by His Spirit. And all of us, well, I don't know if all of us, but I know I have. I've seen things of, that have been called of the Spirit that are just freaky. My grandpa was a Southern Methodist minister back in the 30s, and he rode, he was a circuit-riding preacher. I don't know if you ever heard of anything like that, but he rode a horse between three or four towns in Arizona and preached in four, three or four of these different churches. And my grandpa didn't really know what he was doing, and but his heart hungered for God, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him one day and just really infused life into him. And so he began to share this with his churches. And the, and the denomination wasn't real happy about that, even though John Wesley had this experience himself. And so he ended up no longer being able to be that circuit rider. But he used to tell me, he said, there's a difference between Holy Ghost fire and wildfire. And the Spirit of the Lord is a beautiful presence. When we come together, you can feel His presence together. You can feel it here. I remember a lady, um, her first couple of visits... She said this to me. She says, I want you to know why I like to come to your church. She says, I hear voices in my head. And when I come to your church, they're quiet. I can hear what the Lord is saying. You know, some of us haven't hungered for God. I just want to say this. It's not normal 
for a person who calls himself a Christian to not hunger for God. Any more than it's normal for a baby to stop eating. Every single one of us are going to leave this place today and go eat something. Amen. Right? Yeah, right on. I'm with you, buddy. Where are we going? <laughs> right? Every single one of us. Because our bodies need nourishment. I tell you, our spirits need nourishment. And, a, and there's something wrong in a Christian life that does not hunger for God. There's something wrong. And I'm not saying it's irreparable, but if your heart, if you consider yourself a believer, and you may not, but if you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, and your heart does not want more of God, there's something wrong. Dr. Holy Spirit needs to take a look. Because there's a reason why you're not hungry. There's a reason why. You know, the message last week, knowing God, should have stirred your hearts. And I know it did. Because... We need to eat. We need to eat. So, that's where we're going to stop this morning. But I just encourage you, look in your heart. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? And if you need help learning how to feed yourself, we can, we can help with that. Start with a little daily bread. There's a couple left back there, right outside the door. Yeah, grab a couple of them. That's a wonderful place to start nibbling on things of God. So what I'd like us to do is uh, we're just going to sing this song together, and many of you, many of you know it certainly not new I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses second verse he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other no. I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling But he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share 
as we tarry there. None other has ever known. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Father, that's our desire. Father, we want to know you. We want to know you, Jesus. We want to know you, Holy Spirit. That's our longing. Father, I pray you would help us to want you more, to hunger more for you. Lord, as we come before you, when we step into that holy place, Father, lead us. Lead us to a deep relationship, to a deep rooting of our lives in you. Lord, help us to find that one thing. Knowing you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have a great day. Lord bless you.